Uh, so before we start, let's kind of just go around, uh, starting with you, Sean. Um, who you guys are, what your role is in the gym. My name is Sean Kocab. I'm the new owner of the gym. Awesome. I'm Natalia Rael. I am a fitness trainer. I do online and personal training. Um, I've been here since the beginning of time, so um, happy to be back. And I'm Freddie Sandoval, also a fitness trainer and an MMA coach. Uh, so starting new here with the new beginnings and looking forward to where we go. Awesome. And thank you guys again for coming in and doing this. Um, I, I know that you guys have seen like from between like the podcast page and then talking one on one, especially like uh, you, Natalia, that this is a gym with a lot of history. Uh, I know for the both of us, we have a bit of more personal connection to the place, knowing the previous owner, Garrett. So I've been really looking forward to uh, sitting down together, talking about this and really, uh, you know, really uh, cherishing what we've got going on here, what you guys have got going on. Really, I'm just I'm just a spectator. You know what I mean? I, I get to be a, I get to go to my favorite gym still. And I, I just I'm very, very thankful that this place is still open. You know, I really am. Um, so let's start, I think, with the most uh, the most obvious question for Sean. Um, Prior to the, like the the very short closing of the gym that happened, how long had you been training here? And then, when did it start? Um, when did the idea come in your head that maybe you'd want to become the owner? Um, <clears throat> well, I never really had the idea about becoming the owner, um, but I was training here for about two years. Um, I didn't know Garrett that well. I talked to him a few times. He told me a funny story about him and John Jones. I won't get into that, <laughs> but um, you know, I just fell in love with the gym. It um, just reminded me of what I grew up in, kind of old school, kind of gritty, you know. Uh, but uh, Garrett, I mean, he was always really friendly with me, um, and I actually wanted to talk to him about possibly opening up a jujitsu portion of the gym because that lounge area was never really being used. And I love jujitsu; I've been doing it for a very long time. But uh, then he. You know, a few weeks later, he passed away, and I was actually, unfortunately, I was here the day it happened. And, um, you know, they were letting us in the gym. We weren't even sure what was going on. Um, but then I went outside, and I saw him. And it was pretty tragic. And, again, I wasn't even thinking about owning a gym. But, uh, you know, as I was driving home, after that happened, I was just, I was like, I wonder what's going to happen, you know? I was like, I hate commercial gyms. And I just didn't want to see this place close down. So I reached out to Serena, and she gave me the number of his family. So I talked to them. <clears throat> I was like, listen, I don't, I really want to just keep the gym open. Uh, you know, I don't want anybody to think like I'm trying to take advantage of a bad situation. I just love what Garrett built. You know, I'm not really looking to change it. I just think it could be approved upon. I just think, I just want to see it to its potential. Uh, Cause I just think this gym has a lot of it. But again, it just it, it, the way it happened was it was so weird. You know, his fa I actually got to know his family a bit. Uh, his family a bit during the time. Um, they were super helpful. They were very happy that we we're going to keep his legacy alive. Um, you know, we are going to erect a like memorial for him over by the turf, and it's going to be kind of a tribute, and that's going to be there because you know I'm just a guy keeping it open. I'm not I'm not really the true owner of the gym. I'm just I just want to see it stay alive. I don't think you could ask for a better answer. And, and I say that because that, like, so for everyone listening that that's maybe new to this podcast, I don't, I speak to my guests beforehand about doing this, obviously, but we don't talk about what I'm going to ask. We don't talk about what I want them to say or what they probably should say. But I think that for anyone who knows about the place, cares about the place and cared about Garrett, that's just about as a perfect of a mindset that people could ask for with a new incoming owner. Um, and I know, and it's, it's the truth. And I know that a lot of people, um, message me about it asking like, well, how's it good? Is it going to change provided it stays open? Is this place going to change? Um, I know that's a fear that I had for a little while when we were in that place of limbo of like, who's going to take over. Um, and I definitely want to get into how, uh, really talk about a little bit about how you two got back into, con got into connection and how you were coming back. And again, you were the first trainer to ever work at the place. And um, I think it's great that you reached out to his family first. And, and you're right when you say that you, didn't, you don't want anyone taking advantage of a bad situation. 
because I'm sure that there are a lot of people that had that because, you know, not every person is exactly amazing. And a lot of people have ulterior motives. So, well, <clears throat> I mean, his family told me, like, when I call them, they're like, yeah, we've already had several calls from people wanting to invest in the gym. But they were saying they weren't really serious about it. They didn't, I mean, they just want to throw some money out there and maybe they can get the gym, I guess. I don't know. But they did get, <laughs> I mean, they did get multiple offers um, before I even called. You know, I, I wanted to give it some time. I gave it about at least two weeks before I even contacted them. You know, um, I, mean, I, I still don't think that's really enough time, you know, but I did know that Jim was in danger of closing, so I had to jump on it. Yeah, and I don't think there's ever a real perfect time to ask that question, but there is definitely poor taste in doing it in the first 72 hours. You know what I mean? And I'm right. sure that he got a, or they got a lot of people that did that exact thing. Um, so you end up becoming uh, the owner of the gym, and when you – when you looked around, like I, I, I know as a, as a long time comer of the gym and you've been here a while, there was obviously some love this place needed, right? Um, what was your plan going into um, revitalizing the gym? Not changing it, because again, for people listening on like the audio services, I encourage you to check us out on YouTube because we're, again, we're sitting in an actual octagon and we'll get into why there's an octagon in the gym now. Um, but the look of the place has not changed. It's still Legion Iron. It's still the vision that Garrett had when it first started. But and when you also look around, there's a lot of love. Uh, I think aside from the octagon, the biggest change is the red turf. And I think it looks fucking awesome. It was bright as shit when I first walked in here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, right? oh, my God. Right? Oh, like, yeah. like Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I was like, wow, that is, that is red. Like, it's not like, <laughs> that's not like blood red. That is like bright like Crayola red. That, that was the closest red we could get to the logo. <laughs> I mean. But it looks great. You know, it looks great. So when you came in, what was – when you looked around, what were some of the first things? Like, okay. Here's what we have to do, and it started just rattling off in your in your brain. Well, I mean, first of all, space was the biggest issue. I mean, I mean, everything looked nice and organized, but there's just so much space not being utilized. You know, we have this big metal thing. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I call it the metal contraption. I don't oh, know. Oh, the big jungle gym. Yeah, yeah, the big jungle gym thing. And you know, we're like, God, this doesn't really need to be that big. You know, so me and Freddie took it apart, <clears throat> and then I bought this other big metal rig that hangs punching bags and I bought that from my sister in Las Vegas and so I was like yeah we're gonna have two big metal things in here and we're like well, why don't we just kind of tear that one down a little bit and add the punching bags to that one right. you know I mean just space was just not being used that lounge area right I mean it had cardio machines in there but most of them didn't work we had a broken mirror in there that people were using for posing so now we're like you know what let's create a posing room so now we're creating a posing room because we had three showers at the end of the hallway, never being used. So it was like, okay, let's demolish two of them, turn it into a posing room. Because apparently that's what people like. I didn't even know what a posing room was until I talked to, yeah, I think I talked, you know, Allie. You know, yeah. I think I talked to her. A few fitness models. Like, yeah, I get a posing room. I was like, okay, I can, you know, do that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's just so much more room. I mean, even right now. I mean, we, as soon as we move that big metal thing, jungle gym uh, we still got all this other space for at least six more machines so you know i just ordered a bell squat a lot of people are excited about that and for never, people listening that don't know what a bell squat is um <clears throat> actually i just learned what it is too <laughs> <laughs> so it's a platform hey freddie how about you explain because he's the one that got me into it like, um it's a it's a platform and it runs a cable underneath so you don't have to squat with a bar on your back like a little closer so you, there you go. So uh, it, it's got a platform, and then you, you wrap a, a lifting belt to your waist, and then it hooks to a cable that goes underneath the platform up and around to, uh, to where you can put your weights. You can put bands on there. Um, you can take off the arms on the side of the platform. There's so much stuff you can do. Uh, but what it does is it alleviates a lot of back pain, a lot of knee pain. Uh, if you have hip problems, it will strengthen your hips. Uh, it helps build your knees. It helps your balance, coordination. Uh, I mean, the thing's, the thing's wonderful, and there's just there's a, a huge variety of stuff you can do 
from fitness to powerlifting um, on top of everything. It just sounds like a safer way to squat. It's a safer way to squat, to deadlift, to do anything. To, you can do good mornings on there, you know, uh, and it's just, uh, it's just preventative measures for the body. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty sick. Oh, it's awesome, dude. It's awesome. And so that was the mindset going in physically, but the, how do you say, the style of the gym the number one thing this gym has really been for is powerlifting. So obviously powerlifting is a very niche community still, even still with social media and Instagram. Um, powerlifting is still more of like a subculture than a widespread, very um, like mainstream thing, I guess you could say. So how do you keep the, the essence of the gym as a powerlifting gym, but at the same time you make it appeal to more people? Well, that's the trick, right? I mean, because, <clears throat> like, when Garrett passed away, we lost a lot of members, like, at least 100. And um, we're like, well, it was the legacy members pretty much keeping us alive. So we couldn't push them out. We couldn't change it so much that, you know, they're like, they feel betrayed. You know, a lot of them are his friends, and a lot of them, you know, because we, we had so many people cancel and want refunds for, like, the, the first two months before he died and even after. Um, so we actually made sure all the people that didn't cancel your refunds that they got a few months free while we figured things out because we had to negotiate with the landlords for even two months but they were kind enough to give us the keys just to open right away but but my goal was never to really like I said never to really change his vision it, it's still going to be a pri uh, primarily a power lifting gym it's always going to be that that's going to always be the focus but we always Oh, sorry. But we always wanted to, I mean, just offer things for everybody. You know, one thing me and Freddie talked about, uh, I used to train a lot of MMA and jiu-jitsu. And the thing that sucks about that is you go to your school, you train, then you got to go drive somewhere else to a gym, and then you got to train there. And it just sucks to do that. It's, it's nice to have everything all in one place, you know. And, um, you know, we're also, we also got to, I mean, this gym is very primarily men, um, but we really got to appeal to the female community too. Um, so, <laughs> so we bought a bunch of treadmills because I asked, I started asking people, so what do you guys want? <laughs> you know, yeah, I like um, treadmills too, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, uh, but that was one thing that, you know, they really yeah. wanted and, and yeah. they wanted Stairmasters too, but those are unbelievably expensive. So, I mean, we'll get those eventually. Uh, but, you know, we, that's why we also started one offering fitness classes, too. You know, um, you know, I got a hip thrust machine or glute focus machines. Um, I mean, I use those, but uh, those are very popular with females, too. But, you know, I'm, I am trying to, you know, make everybody feel welcome here. But I definitely don't want, you know, to lose focus of what this gym has always been about. Yeah. No, and that's and again, I think that's something that a lot of not only people that are still sticking around for the gym, but people who are, who, because a lot of people, unfortunately, probably heard about the place for the first time after Garrett's passing. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to get that information out is super important. Um, let's talk about how you guys started working together, and then we're going to get into the fitness programs, and then, again, the female aspect of the gym. I think that's important as well, like you just said. Um, how does... So how did you guys get into contact with each other? And then how does powerlifting meet MMA here? How did we get it? I, you called me. Yeah, I called him. <laughs> I called him. I had heard about this gym um, a long time, on and off, on and off. Um, I've driven by a million times, but I never knew what it was. You know, but I would hear about it, hear about it, but I didn't know it was the same place. Um, and then I, I heard about uh, Garrett's passing. And I was curious to see what was going to go on with the gym. Um, and I was looking for a place to expand also. So I called and uh, we sat and talked. I think our first phone call was, it was pretty lengthy. Like we hit it off real quick. Uh, we we're both jujitsu guys, fight guys, um, and family guys first, you know. So uh, that's, where, that's where it started. And um, for me, I, I train the normal everyday person. I got away from just training athletes uh, to help people accomplish their goals. And that was a lot of things I heard about this gym is, yes, it was based on powerlifting, but it was people coming here to become better versions of themselves. 
you know, everybody wanted to become better, stronger, faster, you know, uh, not just be big and badass, you know. Um, and I see it, the different people that come in through these doors now, you wouldn't look at some of these guys on the street or girls and think, oh, that they go to a powerlifting gym, you know. So the notion that all powerlifters are big, big, big people, uh, I, don't, I don't think it fits, fits true. Um, but bringing it into MMA, uh, I think it's important. Um, because the training that it involves, it will help the fighters and the competitors, not just MMA, just uh, regular jiu-jitsu practitioners. It will help them um, be more physically capable, you know, um, just because of the type of core stuff you have to do with the powerlifting. And I'm still getting new to all this. I'm not familiar with all these different bars and stuff. Uh, everything I do is uh, a lot of body weight stuff and kettlebells, calisthenics. Um, but I just think it's, uh, I think the two go hand in hand really well. Like he said, you know, you get out of the gym at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and you're like, shit, I still need to go lift. It's 15 minutes away. You're going to get in your car, and then you're going to pass the freeway. I'm just going to go home. I'll go tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, and you do it again. And so you never go. So being able to put everything under one roof, uh, I think, is very appealing. Um, and uh, it's going to change the dynamic of this city, I believe. Yeah, and honestly, <clears throat> like even if we didn't have MMA here, I'd still want the cage here because <laughs> everybody loves this cage. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and yeah. it matches. It just it yeah. belongs. Everybody says, like, it belongs here. And, you know, there was a DJ booth there. And we're like, I, I know Gary was really into that stuff, but I'm not a DJ. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and I know you have raves sometimes. Yeah. And, I'm well, <laughs> I think that's a good example of doing what's needed for the gym. And yeah. there is every – you know, everyone has respect, and you're obviously respecting his legacy, and you're obviously keeping this gym as what it was, and doing something like this elevates. Um, it's very much in the spirit of it. Um, uh, one thing that I feel like is really coming back, and since you're coming back as well, is the personal trading side of things. Um, you and I met for the first time, I believe, like a, God, when you were here at like five in the morning, because I would see you training all your clients when I was in prep, um, so what is, before we even get into you coming into Legion, how long you've been personal training? What's your mindset when doing it? Because you bring up a good point where you say, well, I, I don't just train athletes. So I really move away from training. I train the everyday people. And that's what I felt so shocking or what I found was very shocking about a lot of your clients is you, yeah, you would look at them and this is not a negative, but it's just you, I doubt you go to a black and red themed powerlifting gym in downtown <laughs> Albuquerque right. where there is no AC, there is no heating. And you look at in this place and you think someone probably has gotten buried under the fucking building, right? right? <laughs> so the fact that you, uh, you train everybody, right? What is, how long you've been training people? What's your mindset behind training? And then how did you find Legion in the first place? So I first found Legion. Garrett reached out to me when the gym was about to open, and he asked me to be the gym's first sponsored athlete. And, um, of course, I said yes. I was super excited when I came to check out the gym because it's like no other here in Albuquerque. Um, and I fell in love with it right away. <clears throat> I started training here um, officially after the pandemic. So I started my online coaching and then I came back to train full time here at Legion and I just started bringing people in. I started running classes. I started um, just, you know, having my full morning from like 5 a.m. till 11, 12. Um, and it was a second home. You know, I was, this place has a special place in my heart. And when I got actually in touch with um, Sean, I, Luis was the one that had um, gotten us connected. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to be coming back. You know, I was just, I was pretty devastated. But um, when Sean got on the phone and he mentioned, like, nothing's going to be changing. It's, you know, everything's going to stay the same. It's just, yeah, I kind of had to, you know. I love this place so much. And um, I, I re just respect everything that you're doing. And I appreciate what you're, seriously, what you're doing here, because it's, it's awesome. And to see the gym living out to its full potential is going to be just so badass. It's amazing. We are going to have heat, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, the thing, I, too. I paid the gas bill. Yeah. So this winter, we're going to have heat. You know, it's funny, because my wife is part owner, too. And when we were training here, I, I convinced her to train here. It was great. But then when winter rolled around, because Derek didn't run the heaters, she quit. 
Um, I was is, actually really th- grateful and thankful. Like, you know, I had a, a lot of people in here in the winter time, and we were in here in our sweaters, hood, you know, sweats, like hoodies, yeah. and we were we were killing it. But it really, um, it was rough. You know, just having can't let yourself cool down. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. No, quality of life is important. Uh, yeah. We <laughs> are in, we are in 2023, yeah. Yeah, and it does. heating is nice, and AC is nice, but. You know, because there, there was two mindsets with that. And I think it's important, you know, not just as someone, because I would tell, as I still do as many people as I can about the place. But um, I'd imagine as an owner, that is something that regardless of how you feel about things, it's what appeals to the consumer the most. And because I'm right there with you. I don't mind slapping on a sweater and wearing shorts because you heat up eventually and just training, right? That's I actually kind of prefer training in the winter because of that. Right. I'm not the dude that takes off his shirt. Maybe you are because you're jacked as shit, but I'm not. Right. So I love training in the winter. But then at the same time, most people aren't of that mindset. Right. Most it's challenging right. today to get people in the gym. Period. And then it's even yes. more challenging to get them into a training facility that maybe is especially at the time. You know, it's uh, again, you don't have a ace or you don't have heating during the winter. So are they going to go to a place like this where they're probably going to end up training harder either way? Or are they going to go to Defined? Like, no shade to gyms here in Albuquerque, but I've been to Defined. I've been to Choose. I've been to Sports and Wellness. Nine times out of ten, people will go hop on the treadmill, hop on the stairmaster for five minutes, go do the little circuit and split, and they just go through the motions. And what sold me on this place and sold me on Garrett's mindset when he was still alive was he, he told me that, you know, when you come here, you have to, you're coming here for yourself, right? You're not coming to show off. Like, sure, if you're the guy that can show up and pull, you know, five, six, seven wheels, that's awesome. Like, that's badass. But if you're coming to do it right now, no, no one's going to see you, right? If we were shooting, if we weren't shooting right now, nobody's going to see you pull all that weight. You're doing it because you know you can and you're doing it for yourself. Right. And so really selling, the, anything you can do to sell this place better is obviously going to be a benefit. Another thing was Garrett was always really good about, you know, having women in here and making everybody feel really comfortable. There was no like, you know, get you getting creeped on or anything like that. You know, it was a really respectful place. And um, it's always been that way. You always get that feel. It's never uncomfortable. You're never like worried about anybody messing with you. You know, it's so for women it's a great place to come and to get strong, you know? So how do you, I, I was, I've been meaning to find an, an in on this conversation, to ask you that question, because how do you, when you approach your clients, what is your mindset in telling them like, it's okay to be a strong woman, like physically strong? Cause I feel like a lot of, at least in the culture today, it's, uh, if you're going to go to the gym as a woman, you're going to do cardio, you're going to do legs. Maybe they'll do some pull-ups, maybe they'll do some push-ups, but it's rare to see, um a woman deadlifting it's rare to see a woman bench pressing right so but obviously you know how important that is um to your overall health to not neglect these muscle groups so how do you approach that with your clients and what can clients expect when they work from you or work with you sorry one thing i like to mention especially in the world that we're living in today because things are a little bit more crazy is that the stronger you are the more muscle you have you know you're not um struggling with all of these different health problems and things like that because the main thing I focus on is getting my clients healthy from the inside out and so um but that being said like I always like to mention you know the stronger you are the less vulnerable vulnerable you are in the world especially if you have kids and things like that you know you want to be able to be strong and you know the stronger you are the more capable you are of even like you know, carrying your, all your groceries inside by yourself, just doing different tasks, daily tasks that are, you know, not always easy. If you're, if you have health problems and things like that, especially with COVID, you know, being like a big thing now, um, it's now's the time to really not just focus on, obviously everybody wants to look good, but our health is the most important thing. And if you focus on getting healthy now from the inside out, then when COVID comes or this virus comes or, you know, whatever, you're ready for it. You're not having to worry about, you know, as much. Well, no, that's, that's, that's a very good point to make. And I think, because I have, obviously have no interest in getting political about it, but I think what we can all agree on is that, unfortunately, 
you know, the number one groups of people that were affected by the pandemic were people, of course, you have pre-existing conditions and that's, you know, that's unfortunate. Obviously, you should t- still take care of yourself anyway to help mitigate things, but right. it's it was individuals that weren't healthy. Right. And that is really what the, the demographic of individuals that got afflicted the most. And so I think, and, I, and again, I've seen you train firsthand. The people that come here that, that are going to get personal training, they're getting the one-on-one approach. And it's not a, uh, like a generic, it's very curated, right? It's meant for them as people, it's, or as a person, rather. And that's what they're going to be able to get and expect here is a one-on-one experience. And again, it's helping them grow from the inside out. So that's awesome. Right. And the way I really like to, you know, let them know, like, we're getting healthy from the inside out. That means you're going to know exactly when you're going to eat, when you're going to go to the gym, when you're going to wake up, when you're going to go to sleep, things like that. That way, when you do get busy, you know, um, it's a non-negotiable. It's just part of your day, just like brushing your teeth, you know. So. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, actually, personal trainers were actually one of my biggest things I wanted to get into the gym. Right, because I know they I mean they bring in clients, right? And we need a certain amount of clients to survive, right? And we're still behind our numbers, but I just really wanted to reach out to personal trainers because I mean they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of, I've seen people come in here and they don't have a clue. I'm like, I had to go over there and correct them because they're going to hurt themselves. You know, but um, I've actually talked to several personal trainers. Um, you know, and I'm somewhat undercutting the other gyms as far as like what they charge rent and stuff like that. Cause I, d- I do want to build kind of a team. I mean, obviously if they're not employees and they're still going to do their own thing, but we are going to be marketing for personal trainers. We're going to put the profiles and their bios on the website. We're going to um, blast them on social media. Um, I want to actually talk to them about, you know, creating some kind of video about what they offer. Um, Cause I mean, if you're going to put your health in a personal trainer's hand, like you should really know them. <laughs> You know, um, is there any plans to I know even Garrett was talking about that at one point and expanding out and building. Um, were there any plans to? Well, I, I, <coughs> pardon me. I don't own the building, so renovations has to be negotiated, obviously. And me and Freddie always talked about how we can expand that building all the way to that huge storage container. But until then, um, even the patio area, I want to we want to turn it into a dog run because um, people do like to bring their dogs here. Um, but where that Viking workout is, it's going to be next to that, next to the storage container. And I was just looking at the space there, and I was actually just looking online for, like, those uh, Ninja Challenge obstacle courses. Oh, like the Ninja Warrior stuff? The Ninja Warrior, yeah. yeah. So I, I thought that would be maybe in, like, a year be cool to have That's that. Badass. Yeah. So before we close out, obviously there is a big grand opening happening on the 30th. Um, what is going to be going on at that time? Well, um, we are going to showcase some of our workouts. We're going to have a deadlifting competition, the MMA fights. Um, <laughs> you, you guys all watch Breaking Bad? Remember the little kid Brock? You know, um, Jesse's stepson. Jesse's, st- yeah, the kid that he poisoned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, him yeah. and his father actually yeah. helped us um, lay down turf. Okay. And um, they own Caveman Burgers, so Caveman Burgers is actually going to be serving food out there. Um, but Brock, he. Uh, Brock. Ian is actually his name. Um, he puts on classic car shows. And he was like, why don't, I, why don't we put on a classic car show here? He's like, I get like 70 cars and like 200 people. And I was like, well, why don't, that's a little much. <laughs> I mean, It'll be a it, car show. Yeah, it's not I mean, a grand opening. It, it, it's not a car show with a gym. It's a gym yeah. with a car show. Right? Yeah. I was like, how about we do like 20 classic cars, right? So we're going to have classic cars there too, because I, I, I guess that's pretty popular in Albuquerque. And, you know, just... I think it's going to be a blast. You know? awesome. I think the competitions will be cool. We're going to have like a relay race with the, the push sleds, stuff like that. Kick ass. And so for everyone listening, um, a date. Or so, who, so who all is going to be there for that? Like, will they be able to meet? Obviously, they'll be able to meet you two. But as far as like the personal trainers that are going to be there and like, because again, the, the gym doesn't need a huge staff, obviously. But like what, um, what trainers and what, like, I guess, yeah, uh, staff members are going to be there for everyone to meet. Well, I want to give, if a personal trainer has some kind of class they do want to showcase, I'm definitely willing to let them do that. Um, it's, right now it's just about a matter of coming up with a schedule and space for everything we're going to do. Um, <laughs> what was the question? What was the, uh, <laughs> what, uh, like who, uh, so who's going to be putting it on? Who's going to be here like from the gym? Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, obviously me, my wife, 
<clears throat> Garrett's family is going to be here because they are going to help um, put up the memorial for him. We're going to put a picture up for him. I'm hoping we can put some of his trophies up there too. Um, you know, and I want during that time it would probably be before the deadlifting competition because that was kind of his thing. And we're going to give ch uh, people that were close to him a chance to you know say a few words. And um, again, I just we want people to know that it is his gym, and we do want to honor that and honor him. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys very much for uh, sitting down and doing this. Um, I, uh, I say it all the time, but I'm very selfish when it comes to this podcast. Uh, it's one of the only things in life I try to be the most selfish about regarding who I talk to and who I have on. And I, this was something I really wanted to do uh, for a long time now. we are really looking forward to this. So thank you all for not only coming on and explaining to everyone listening what's going to be happening and how the gym is moving forward, uh, but thank you guys for, in your own parts, especially yours is the biggest because you're owning the damn place. Uh, thank you all for carrying on Garrett's legacy. Uh, it means a lot to a lot of people, and it's, it's awesome. So I'm really excited for this place to open back up, and it's going to be a great fucking time. So September 30th? 1 p.m. 1 p.m., and uh, I will put the time and the date and the address in the description for everyone to find. 